One of the biggest elements that make memorable moments for us when we watch movies is the music that's composed for them. Before film, people would go see musicals and plays at playhouses and theaters, and there would be live orchestras playing music to the scenes and the dialogue, giving life to the performance. By the time movies became popular, there hadn't yet been technology developed to play sound and audio, so movies were silent and the words were displayed on screen. To make up for a lack of sound and audio, there would be often live orchestras or even a live piano player whose job it was to fill in music to fit the scene. Film directors would often give these composers a list of popular music, keys, tempos, and moods to play in. This process by default created a type of music that could both predict and react. As composers continue to develop and change the sound of cinematic music, there's an element that remains the same, the use of live instruments and orchestras. With all that information, I would like to show you how I approach composing a film score. I'm an NYU film school graduate, sucker! To begin any film scoring process, you're going to want to take the video or the footage that you're going to be writing to and pull it up into your DAW or alongside your DAW, however you're able to do it. As you see, the footage that I'm composing to doesn't have any music to it already. So I was just going through and listening to what kind of emotion the video was evoking and what kind of themes I might want to follow. The plugin I'm using is BBC Symphony Strings, which is a free plugin on Spitfire Audio. I start my whole idea with the string basses and the cellos and build my way up from there. In classical music, the bass notes or root notes dictate the musical direction that the song will take because those notes are the foundation of the chords as they change. I've chosen to use the string bass as a drone to kind of bring out a tense emotion that we already feel by the clear anger of this gentleman. There I was just experimenting with the cellos to try to create a second voice over the bass drone. So that was the cello line that I chose to go with. It was simple, it was just following the scale that the piece that I'm composing is in. When it comes to film scoring or writing to visuals, I don't really think too hard about my end goal. I just experiment within the key that I've chosen to compose in. This time, I got lost in the sauce. It was so bad that I forgot to set the metronome before I even started on the idea. Sometimes this might happen to you if you get carried away, and it's not the end of the idea. You can kind of save the BPM. Somehow I was lucky enough to find the correct BPM and lock that in. In a string orchestra, there are usually five main sections. And within those sections, sometimes written in the music is a chord for them to play. But how could a string instrument that can only play polyphonically play a chord? Well, within their sections, they will split off and play different notes, creating that chord, opening up the sound and the timbre of the orchestra.
by this point in the process, I was pretty confused why I was still on this idea that I was having. But the music was flowing, so I decided to continue. There had to be a reason why I was doing this. Like any good cinematic composer, I honorably added timpanis. The purpose of the timpanis were to transition the sections of the instrumental that I was composing. This piece isn't built on loops but rather two sections or themes, an A section and a B section. With that mentality, it can help you evoke multiple emotions within one piece of music. I wanted the switch up here to feel like one of those Oblivion or Skyrim NPC memes where the character flips their emotion on dime because you accidentally said the wrong dialogue. In this free strings plugin, it gives you the option to tell the orchestra to play with different styles. I have chosen to go with plucking instead of bowing for this section. Once again, I've gone back to the basses and laid down the idea that I've wanted. I wrote in the same note for the cellos, and they're following what the basses are playing. I split out a second cello part, and they're now playing the melodic line that you hear. In no specific order, I go back to the timpanis. The section that I'm building right here had no intentions at the moment, besides being just a plain atmospheric layer to create a reference point for a possible switch in the instrumental here. scale just to get my brain to recognize the different notes that I could play. As soon as I started playing that pedal note or repeating note, I knew that I had locked in the theme. A lot of composing for film has to do with borrowing ideas, and what I'm playing here probably sounds familiar because of the pedal note. To wrap up the idea, I begin to go down the scale chromatically to reach a final cadence. And then we get back to the root note, home. Since I've used the piano to write in the next section, I go back to the basses yet again and start laying down bass notes that follow the pedal note. chose to do light stabs since the piano is already filling the sound up. As you can see, I'm reaching the end of the footage that I've chosen to score. So I'm wrapping up the idea musically. That doesn't mean that I'm done working on the whole piece yet. I add a cello line that plays the notes in the middle of a chord. The notes are suspended and create almost a hypnotic-like effect. For the chromatic section at the end, I choose to ascend my notes going up with the cellos against the descending notes that the piano and the bass are playing. At this point, I venture a little outside a string orchestra and I pull in a French horn. I don't think it changes the sound too much because French horns are known for having that warm, buttery sound. 
to me, French horns always add a uh, epic kind of no! quality to the music. I employ a strategy called call and response here between the French horns where the low notes and the high notes are the same notes, but they talk to each other. They go back and forth, a friendly banter. As if we hadn't gone far enough down the cinematic rabbit hole, I decided to uh, explore even more. I chose to borrow the line that the trumpet player is playing in this video. Instead of playing in the major key, I chose to make it the minor key instead. I don't know what you call that. Is that a uh, interpolation? Is that a interpretation? Is that a alteration? What's going on? I've lost my train of thought. A film composer's job is to sell the idea of the visuals musically using elements directly from the video and following the motions that you see in the actual footage. It's almost like a reactionary game. Only you get to choose as a composer if you want to react to the story unfolding visually or if you want to predict. I'd say it's safe to do both within one composition. By this point, my idea is pretty much done. I've stopped adding in any new musical ideas and I've began to balance and slightly mix what I've made with a little bit of compression on the master channel and an EQ, it came to life.